Hey everybody, this is Shaquille O'Neal, and this pre-calculus lesson is on modeling real-world data with polynomial functions. Oh boy! Now let's first take care of this board problem right here. Okay, we're going to solve each of these uh, uh, radical equations and inequality down here. So let's take care of number one. I'm going to square both sides. First I subtracted four. I wanted to isolate that radical right there. And when I square it, don't forget to foil that out. x minus 4 times x minus 4 gives me x squared minus 8x plus 16. All right, and then I subtracted 2x from 8x, and then I added 5 to 16, and I got that. And then I get 7 or 3. And I have to check both 7 and 3 because my chances are probably one of them, maybe both of them, won't check out. It looks like 3 doesn't check out. I get 3 equal to 1 plus 4, and that doesn't work when I plug in uh, 3 for right there and 3 for right there. So 3 doesn't, but 7 does, so the answer is 7. All right, let's check uh, this one here. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to cube both sides right here. So when I cube this cube root, it gets rid of the radical. And when I remember I added 6 to both sides, I had to isolate the radical by itself and cube 1 is 1. So you get x equals uh, -2 and then I just checked it right there to make sure that it did check out, you guys. Okay, and it does check out. Okay, here's number 3. Um, got a plus 2 to both sides and then square both sides and then uh, I get 6 or 1 and then I'm going to check 6 and 1. Uh, it looks like a 6 checked out but 1 doesn't check out so the answer is 6. Alright, and then this one here, square both sides, you get x is less than or equal to 7 and then don't forget uh, this radical, this, if this number inside is called the radicand. The radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero, so that's the only other restriction. So I make it greater than or equal to zero and solve for x. So there's my restrictions on, on x right there. It's uh, between negative four-thirds and seven, inclusively with the equals bar. Okay, so modeling real-world applications with polynomial functions. Okay, so here's general shapes. These are just general shapes of polynomial functions. Linear functions, a line doesn't have any humps, has zero humps, okay? Notice the degree of a linear function is one because there's an imaginary ax to the first power right there. Okay, quadratic equations, the degree is two, a typical quadratic graphs a parabola. Okay, this is an upside down parabola, but that's okay. Uh, parabolas uh, have one hump. Can you see the hump right there? It's right there, okay? So quadratic is degree two, one hump. Look, degree one, zero humps, always one less uh, the amount of uh, uh, degrees gives you the humps on that. Here's a cubic equation. A cubic equation typically looks like this. Now some cubics don't have any humps. Okay, it goes down through like that. So a cubic might have two humps or no humps. It's always one less than the degree or two less than that or two less than that. So, so a cubic uh, would look like that. A typical uh, qua uh, quartic, they call it, um, uh, would have three humps. Look, one hump, two hump, three humps. Remember the fourth roots? Uh, they have they, it's a touchdown. They both go like the you know, and the, they both shoot up, or it might go shooting down. Uh, a cortic might have three humps, or it might have one hump. Could look like a parabola, a skinny parabola. But if you see three humps right there, I would think it's going to be a cortic. Okay, if I see two humps, I think it's going to be a cubic. If I see one hump, I'm going to think it's probably going to be a quadratic, and then typically that's a line right there, so a linear. All right, so determine the type of polynomial functions that we could use to represent the data in each of the scatter plots. So say I had a scatter plot that kind of gave me something like that. Okay, can you see that right there? Can you see, look at the humps, how many humps? Looks like there's two humps going on right there, so two humps tells me it's going to be a cubic. Okay. All right, so let's try this guy right here. How many humps do you see there? I see one hump, so probably a quadratic, okay? All right, so uh, so here's a, you're going to use a graphing calculator. Let's say we had some kind of a word problem that gave me this data right here. And I'm going to show you how to create a, a function using our graphing calculators right here. So what you're going to do is, is pull out your graphing calculators. Hopefully you have a, a TI-83 or a TI-84. I don't know how to help you if you don't. Uh, well, I do, it's just I don't have enough time to do that, and this uh, our textbook is designed to supplement the TI-83s and 84s. So what you're going to do is pick up your graphing calculators and um, uh, hit second function memory, and your memory is above your plus sign right there, and then choose clear all lists, and then hit enter, and it will say done. Clear all lists is number four. Okay, when you hit uh, second function memory, clear all lists is number four, and then hit enter, and it should say done. Okay, and then what you're going to do is, is you're going to go now, I press stat. 
stat is um, let's see where's my calculator here it is stat uh, is uh, it's kind of in the top middle right there it's it's right below the del delete button okay hit stat and then when you hit stat then hit edit number one okay and then you'll see a bunch of lists in there and they should all be blank because we just cleared them all from right above and make sure you scroll over to list one mine always puts me in list two or list three or whichever list I was working on last okay and then in list one we're gonna enter all the X values so I'm gonna enter negative one now be careful the negative key is down to the left of your enter button don't don't uh, don't uh, mistake it with the minus key. The minus key is between the times button and the plus button. We want to hit negative. Hit your negative button and then hit one and then hit enter. Okay, and then hit negative button again, 0.5 enter, 0 enter, 0.5 enter, 1 enter, 1.5 enter, and keep doing that with list one. When you finally enter that last one in, then scroll over to list two and enter all of these in list two. Okay, and when you get all of those in list two, double check, make sure you do that, and you should have something that looks like that. Here's my list one, list two, list one, list two, and that's that's these guys. And these are actually ordered pairs, and we're going to use them as ordered pairs. All right, after you do that, now make sure you don't have anything in your y equals. Your y equals is in the top left hand corner. So click y equals and if you see any equations in there, go highlight them and clear them out. So hit, uh, hit clear on all of those so there's nothing in there because of the, it'll, it'll drag down everything. Okay, so now hit second stat plot and your stat plot is right above y equals. Okay, okay, and then uh, click enter for plot one and make sure you have that turned on. Make sure all the other ones are turned off because if you have anything else on, it'll say uh, dimension error or something. Okay, so scroll down to the type after you turn it on. Scroll to type and select the first graph, which is a scatter plot. There's, there's several kinds of graphs in there. I think there's six of them in there. And you want to hit scatter plot, which is the first graph. Okay, and then um, and then you're going to scroll down to your X list, and you're going to select list one, and you select list one by uh, it's uh, you do you hit your second function L1, and L1 is above your number one sign. Okay, and then uh, after you do that, then scroll to list Y or Y list, and then hit select list two, which is above uh, your number three. So I'm going to go second function list two. Okay, and then hit graph, and then when you hit graph. If your graph doesn't look like that, that's because your view window is not to scale. So go ahead and hit your window, which is in the top left-hand corner, next to your Y equals button. And this is your X min, negative 10. Make sure you hit your negative button, not your minus button. And your X max is 10. Make sure your scale is 1. This is your Y list, uh, negative 10 to 10, scale of 1. And it should give you a graph that kind of looks like that. Okay. Now this looks like there's two humps, so this looks like it's going to be a cubic equation. Okay, so now let's go uh, click stat. Okay, go ahead and click stat again and then scroll your top over to calculate and then click cubic uh, regulation. So we're going to hit cubic, which on my calculator is number six. Okay, and I chose cubic because there's two humps. Now click uh, second function list one and then click your comma button, which is above the number seven, and then hit second function list two. And it should be this, you guys. It'll give you something that looks like this. Okay, you'll see in your calculator, uh, C U B I C R E G, and you're going to go uh, list one, comma, list two, and then you're going to hit enter. Okay, then enter. And then when you do that, uh, it's going to get you something that looks like that. Okay, now look, there's my cubic equation. I can see that a equals 1, so it's going to be 1x cubed. b is basically negative 3.00. If it was like negative 3.1, I'd put negative 3.1. Let's carry it out to two decimal places. So I'm going to put minus 3, because it's negative 3.00. So minus 3x squared plus c, what's c? c is, uh, looks like 1.00, so I'm going to put plus 1x and then plus d. D is a negative 5.0, so I'm going to do just minus 5 right there. So I get this cubic equation right there. Okay, so now I'm going to enter that into uh, y equals. So how I enter it into y equals, press y equals, and then uh, I'm going to press in x to the third, which is that little caret button, which is right below the clear. So x caret 3, that'll give me x cubed. Okay, and then I'm going to do minus, 
Okay, so then I'm going to press my minus button and then 3x squared. So there's my minus 3x squared. This is minus, not negative. It's a minus. And then I'm going to hit plus and then I'm going to put in x. Oh, and your x button, sorry you guys, your x button is right next to your alpha. Can you see your alpha right there? That green button that says x, t, and there's a little like a zero with a dash through it. That means uh, theta and then N. So hit your, that's your X button right there. And then do your uh, minus five and then hit enter. Okay, and once you hit enter, now it's programmed into your Y equals. Now I'm gonna go ahead and graph that stuff, you guys. And when you graph that, check it out. It's gonna make that line go right up that baby. And that thing is, that's, that's some pretty powerful stuff right there. So now I have an equation that matches uh, that data right there.